Hi everyone, welcome, it's Lonnie. Welcome back to Grace Blossoms for you. Today I'm going to be making some watercolor embellishments. And I didn't catch the name of the person I was seeing or watching do this. It just uh, came across my Facebook feed and I thought it looked easy enough that we might want to give it a try. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to put out some colors and we'll go from there. Okay, so if I think about how they may have done this, I think they may have done that drop method. So you make like little pools. Something like that and then maybe rinse your brush take some of the color off and then take I don't know maybe a small round brush depending on the size of your paper or how big you want your flower and then just kind of go Something like that. And this is the cheap watercolor paper I'm using. I thought I would just practice one on here and then maybe move. I actually wanted five petals, but I think I have them too close together here. So we want it a little bit dark right where we started. I'm just going to drop some more color in. Okay, then I'm going to let that one dry. And then I'm going to go on to some arches paper. I think that'll work better. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. Maybe I'll have to spread them out a little bit more. Yeah, so they didn't really show how they got this look. So I'm guessing at that part, they just showed the results at the end. Okay, so I want the darker color to be towards the center here. So I'm just gonna move it. Sometimes you can move it easily. It just depends on how much has dried already, I guess. Okay. Um, almost have it where I want it, just a little bit lighter. 
So I did drop some clean water in there and then just kind of moved it with my brush. So probably the longest thing this I mean, I'm trying to make it pretty, so I'm taking my time. Okay. So, yeah, I just want the actual petals to be kind of light. Probably should have taken that color again. I'll do another one of that later. All right, I'm gonna do another one over here. So yeah, I have to space them out so you can get a decent size. Okay. I'm just kind of making rounded triangles, roughly. And this one has to come a little bit nicer. So they don't have to be perfectly shaped. Just I'm trying to go for, you know, a nice petal shape if I can. All right, so the cheap watercolor paper, you can tell it's not the greatest. Okay, this uh, arches is um, nice because it's great for dropping in color after you have put something down. It's called the wet on wet technique and it just makes um, a nice feathered look. So you can, um, it looks like natural veins popping in if you um, add just enough water and color and then it's still wet and then it kind of feathers out. So I'm trying to encourage that to bleed okay so that also has to dry now this one is already dry so i don't think oh well, that's actually not quite dry see if it does anything here Okay, so I'm going to let this one dry completely. This one, I'm, well, I'm gonna finish it, I guess, just, just to see what it's gonna look like. Also, I'm going to try a darker color. So then we'll have four to play with here. So that's a really, like a deep, it says burgundy, but. Okay, so spread them apart. I'm doing five. You could probably do, I don't know, four, six, however many you want. Just the more dots you're gonna put in, the bigger space you need, so. Okay. If all you have is the cheaper color, then by all means. All right, so I'm going to um, finish this and then I'll wait for it to dry and then I will come back. Okay, I am back. 
Sorry, my light went out, so I'll have to make do with the overhead one that casts shadows. Okay, so I went ahead and I did one more, and I used the cheap paper, but I found it works better if you use more water. So this was my first attempt, and that was my second attempt. I did like that one better. Also, the green is more olive green here. There is less of the brown in here, so it's a little more green and vibrant, so that might be good. All right, so then what we do next, and I'm gonna do this one again because, again, this is my first attempt, so it will be um, still practice on this one. All right, so what I'm gonna do is grab a sharp black pen, sharp, I mean a small tip. Now these are not waterproof, but it's a 0.35. So I've waited till this is dry, and so now I'm going to um, do what I wanna do here. So basically what she did was she outlined the flower like so. And she outlined the leaves as well. And hers were lighter, so I don't know if that, it made for a more delicate look, I think. So for a delicate look, obviously I've put too many or too much paint down. But hey, practice, right? Okay, so then I think she drew like tiny little random circles in the center here. You know, for the center of the flower. And she didn't use just black. I saw one where she had done it with gold. And that was nice too, but I don't think I have a very fine gold pen like this. And then you could make the little, I don't know, what are those called? Just the lines to make the flower a little more involved here. I like it already. It's not even done yet, but it is close. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could put gold on it, like splatter, but I think I'm just gonna leave it there. And this one I'm gonna kinda not follow as closely because it's a darker color and I want people to be able to see that it was done randomly. draw lines in the leaves too. What I might do is um, use the gold in the center, but there's all sorts of room for experimenting here. So. Okay, oops, forgot one. All right, so these two are basically done. Then what she did was, you could leave it as a card if you wanted, but what she had done is she basically used these for fussy cuts. So then, she just generally gave a little bit of room around everything here. Yeah, so if you know who did this, let me know in the comments. I'm not trying to steal anybody's thunder. I just didn't recognize the name and I didn't spend a lot of time looking at the thing either. You know how it is in your feed and you're actually looking for something else and then something pops up and then later you think, oh, 
that was a good idea. So I think these would take uh, minimal time once we had a little bit of practice. So. There, isn't that pretty? And like I said, that's just the cheap paper. So I'm just gonna draw some lines in the leaves. I think that adds something. Like that, and then for this one, I'm gonna try just some gold um, splatter. Okay, I am done. So what I did was after I put the um, the black, like the ink on it, I went in and I put with the brush some gold on top of the centers and then I splattered a little bit around the rest of the flower. And to me that looks just fabulous. So lots of ways to dress these up. And I'm sure if you are into doing Christmas cards and things like that, you might want to actually try this with holly and berries. I think that would look really good. Um, so what am I gonna do with these? Well, I'm going to put them in my journals. And one of the things I'm going to do is put them on the side of the pages. And I'm going to spread out the colors somewhat and overlap them. So this will be a like a page edger. Or it can be, it doesn't have to be. But that's one of the things that came to mind. And one more, I think, like so. And then they can just be glued down. I think that'll be really pretty. This one's not quite dry yet, so I'm gonna put that one over here. But yeah, so that's one idea. Another idea is to use them as you would fussy cuts. So in clusters, um, you could leave them loose too, and then just stick them inside a little makeshift belly band, like something like that. I've used some ribbon to make like a tuck side belly band there. Or you could always stick them in a pocket or decorate a pocket. I mean, really, you could do pretty well anything. You could decorate belly bands. You could just make this a tuck. If I glued down the just the leaves, you could stick something inside there. So you could also do like a vine up the page and make this a belly bend. Something like that. That's pretty. So anyways, I hope you give that a try and let me know if you do. And uh, thanks for joining me today and uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.